After all of Jianjian's pains throughout the transmutation, she is now one of the clansmen, and it's as if she became a completely different person. Taegyung, who looked after her during the process, is not to be found around his home and is preoccupied with business concerns, leaving Zhang Yan alone in a large house with several other clansmen she is unfamiliar with. At Taegyung's office, Min Jae, his secretary, was reporting to him about some of their clansmen getting into a battle with the family of Yu's underlings, but there were no casualties and only minor property damage. He also stated that the Yu family has chosen to remain mute on the subject. It made Taegyung believe that encounters with the Yu family had become routine for them. The Seo family is outraged at the loss of a direct descendant at the hands of a lunatic while the Yu family demands to see the scumbag who ruthlessly ended their lovely princess's life. He also inquired about Jianjian's health. The secretary responded that there was nothing noteworthy to report. The secretary was curious if their leader had genuine feelings for Zhang Yan, but since he was the one who cared for her, it's obvious they both did. Min Jie then questioned Taegyung if he had considered removing Jianjian's memories if she refused to accept given her obvious enmity toward them. She nearly lost her life twice because of Taeho, Taegyeong's younger brother, so it's no surprise that Zhang Yan is like that unless blind love is at play. Taegyeong began to wonder if Zhang Yan was in love with his brother Taeho. He was aware that Taeho lacked the ability to care for his spouse, but there was no doubt about the influence he had on women, who were even enchanted by his carefree attitude. Even the modest Mai Young He of the Yu family was smitten by Taeho's charisma and decided to marry him, despite the fact that her decision would be met with many criticisms. So even that human woman, Zhang Yan, was no exception however, Taeho abandoned her after having his way with her. And it was up to Taegyeong to save Zhang Yan as she was on the verge of perishing. It's as though they're in a sleazy soap drama about two brothers fighting over one woman. But Taegyeong's heart aches, for some reason. Min Jae then mentioned to Taegyeong something he considers strange. Taeho stayed in Jianjian's apartment for over three months before the incident. He also stated that Zhang Yan is not the type of woman Taeho is attracted to. Taeho may be irresponsible with women, but he would never purposely leave his smell with a woman for whom he has no feelings. Taegyeong then asked his secretary if what he was saying was that Zhang Yan was special to Taeho even though he left her almost dying. Min Jae responded to Taegyeong by expressing that he, too, found that aspect difficult to understand. Taeho's recent checks were largely utilized for women's clothing and cosmetics, despite the fact that when it came to human women, he mostly used them for hotel room payments. So him being completely out of character with Zhang Yan is, to say the least, strange. Taegyeong was informed by Min Jae that Zhang Yan may be a mistress that Taeho has grown fond of. Taegyeong cast a cold gaze at Min Jae as infidelity is a serious, unforgivable sin in the Seo family. He simply thought that the two had a deeper connection, but Taegyeong cut him off and warned him that whatever the two's connection was, it would be preferable to delete Jianjian's memories if she refused to cooperate. Min Jae reasoned that it would be for the best, but his sole concern was if Taeho would agree to wipe Jianjian's memories. Taeho will go on a rampage as soon as he finds Taegyeong sent on Zhang Yan, since Zhang Yan not only smells like Taegyeong but also carries his energy deep within her body. Taegyeong questioned himself about where it all went wrong. Even though he and Taeho are only step siblings, he basically raised Taeho as if he were his son. Taeho was terrified of the opposite gender as a child, most likely because his birth mother went insane. But that all changed when he matured. Suddenly, it seemed as if his whole purpose in life was to pursue women. He had meaningful relationships with around a dozen of them, while his one night affairs were at best obscene. All of the clansmen felt that a womanizer like him could never settle down with only one partner. Even the esteemed princess of the Yu family, Mai Young He Yu, was no match for him. His pursuits after her passing would be indescribable. Taegyeong stated that all Taeho needed after marriage was to live a happy life. He didn't want to offer Taeho and Mai Young He his blessings, but they both sincerely desired it, so he caved with Taeho too easily. Suddenly, a third-rank assistant knocked on the office door, 
announcing that the Yu family's head would be arriving soon. He froze as he saw their clan leader, who emitted an intimidating air. Min Jae then questioned if they should continue as planned. Taegyung replied, yes, since they were still their allies at the end of the day, and they couldn't let blood be spilled again. He also mentioned preparing gold in the amount of Myung he used weight. He stated that they would provide them with the arboretum as well as a guest villa with hunting fields and that the dowry would be returned in full. Minji's only concern was whether their offer was insufficient to persuade the Yu family to drop the matter, given that the young ones were already agitated. Taegyung told him that the Yu family has their hands full trying to keep them in line and that they would prefer to avoid a fight as well. Min Jae agreed to Taegyung because if there was a dispute between their family and the Yu family, one of the families would have to concede and leave the country. When Min Jae saw their clan leader, he despised Taeho deep within him since Taeho had never been helpful to their clan leader since the day he was born. Finally, the Yu family arrived. Taegyung thanked the Yu clan leader for showing up and the Yu leader apologized for the multiple transgressions committed the day before. The Yu commander directly asked Taegyung why he summoned him. Taegyung handed the Yu leader a document outlining their compensation for the incident. He also stated that tragedy struck both families. The victim of the Seo family, on the other hand, was a newborn baby, while the victim of the Yu family was a respectable adult woman. Taegyung stated that the gap in seriousness between the two must be recognized. Taegyung was asked by the Yu leader if he was a faithful spouse to their Mai Young He. Taegyung said that, despite Taeho's reckless habits, he could tell him that Taeho's wife was happy and that he was faithful to his wife. He then questioned Taegyung if this was one of those cases where the Seo family's daughters in law had gone insane. Taegyung said, yes, and the Yu leader concluded that the occurrence from the Seo bloodline showed they are genetically flawed. When Min Jae heard this, he became enraged and told the Yu leader that he had crossed the line. The Yu leader claimed that it couldn't be a coincidence that three generations of daughter-in-law went into a frenzy after giving birth. Before things heated up, the Seo family's receptionist stepped in and said that Lady Yu was sincerely happy and that she could tell the Yu leader that no single side was to blame. Taeho and Mai Young He were both looking forward to the arrival of their child before the tragedy occurred. While the receptionist was speaking, Min Jae noted that one of the clan head Yu's trio was missing, and that person had never been absent before, so Min Jae wondered where that person could be. The Yu leader expressed his skepticism to Taegyung. He is certain that Taegyung was aware of his opposition to Taeho and Mai Young He's union from the start, and that Taegyung shares his viewpoint. Taegyung acknowledged that, but he also stated that the tragedy had already occurred and both families had lost something valuable. He went on to claim that, while it's difficult to believe, Taeho was also distressed from the shock. Following that, one of Yu's trio abruptly mentioned Taeho doing his rounds and visiting the homes of various women. He further stated that Taeho approached human women primarily because he was terrified of being tracked. The Yu leader stopped his subordinate and told Taegyung that he trusted him and that Taegyung would not lie to him, but the same cannot be said for Taeho. He was reckless and would bluff his way out of any unpleasant circumstance. So the Yu leader's main concern was not Taegyung or the Seo family, but Taeho alone, because he couldn't trust him. He concluded his talk by telling Taegyung that the Yu family would thoroughly investigate Taeho. If what Taegyung stated was accurate and they discovered nothing alarming about Taeho's past, they will dismiss the case as a joint tragedy, however, if their investigation reveals otherwise, they will treat Taeho in the same way that Mai Young He was treated and will be torn apart. At Taegyung's manor, Jong Yan noticed that it was raining outside and thought to herself that she had come to hate the rain and it was raining too the day Taeho showed up. It's already been over a week since she has been at the manor. All that talk about being a family together is just a pretty packaging because it's like she was confined at that house in the guise of protection. If she even considers running away, they would take her back and force her to do anything they want, so she must find a way out. She found a CD player and put on some music to block out the rain. 
There was nothing but jazz music in there, not even a single pop or classical disc. She remembered what Tae Young said her about offering his hand and trusting him while listening to the music. She wondered whether that was what you'd call kind. Even the music's lyrics remind her of Tae Young, giving the impression that she has affections for him. Jong Yan couldn't relax, so she went in search of a cigarette. She remembered Tae Young had one in his room, so she went there. Tae Young isn't in his room, but she can smell him all over the place. After getting a pack of cigarettes, she pondered why Tae Young had urged her to stay in his manor if she was going to be alone anyhow. She is surprised when she smokes the cigarette because it is so strong. She seemed to see Tae Young in front of her, smoking a cigarette, as she remembered Tae Young offering her one. She threw the cigarette out the window because she couldn't stop thinking about him. Tae Young is having coffee with someone, and the woman mentioned that the house feels a lot livelier than it did previously. Tae Young's mother is that woman. It's been four years since Tae Young heard she was on vacation, but his mother doesn't appear to have become tanned in the least. Tae Young's mother agrees with him and employs her charm on him. Tae Young prevents her mother from using clan power to influence him. He also instructed her mother to simply mention her reasons for visiting. The Korean clansmen, who place a high value on maintaining their lineage purity, each have an animal to represent them. The Yu family represents a wolf, the Seo family represents a lion, and the Young family represents a deer. Despite having a creature as their emblem, the Young family is far from being weak. Their elegance is only matched by their incredibly cold disposition. Tae Young's mother, Ah Young Young, is a direct descendant of the Young family. Tae Young's mother told him that he takes after her family. She even informed him that he was the spitting image of the Young family's former leader, who possessed delicate beauty, yet they dubbed him the Iron Recluse. Tae Young was tired of hearing and asked her mother what she was attempting to say. She informed her son that such a character does not exist in the Seo family. Tae Young realizes he's nothing like them after hearing it. His mother expects and wants for him to have the basic instinct present in all clansmen, the desire to crush and trample your opponent, as well as a ferocious mentality driven by cruelty under the guise of rationality. His grandfather, though, would not have been poisoned by his own son if it hadn't been for it. But since none of this is new to Tae Young, he's perplexed as to why his mother is bringing it up in this way. Tae Young was compared to the juvenile moron Taeho by her mother. Tae Young has realized that she still dislikes Taeho. Her mother went on to say that Taeho is a spitting image of their father, irresponsible and selfish, with an empty head. A total idiot who acts solely on impulse. Tae Young became upset after hearing that. She offered Tae Young to help him cheer up after learning that Taeho had just caused him a lot of trouble. When Tae Young heard it, he gave her mother a harsh look and declined. He knew it was her mother's way of warning him. As if to remind him that she is ready to push him off the edge at the slightest misstep. Everything from purposefully using her clan powers to try to influence him as if she were testing him, to hoping to get a rise out of him after mentioning the Young family bloodline and biting her own arm to avoid giving in to lunacy during Tae Young's birth. Could be her way of getting revenge for the past. Tae Young then inquired of her mother as to the true reason for her visit. Her mother responded by adding that she had heard Tae Young had found himself a lover, a human woman he had personally transmuted. Tae Young was taken aback and wondered who had leaked the information. Even if there had been a leak, such a story would never have reached the Young family, so he realizes it must be her mother's powerful influence. Her mother then asked Tae Young when he was going to introduce the woman he loves, but Tae Young said she was his responsibility and there was no reason for them to meet. Her mother became enraged after hearing what Tae Young said and urged him not to respond to his mother with rubbish. She also warned him of the implications of a transmutation for clansmen. Tae Young stated that she is currently under his protection and that her memories will be erased if necessary. Tae Young's mother was astonished because she imagined he was in love with that human. Tae Young emphasized that, while the transmutation was successful, she was still a human woman at the end of the day, 
and no one expected her to accept becoming a clansman overnight. He also indicated that he is uninterested in romantic relationships. Her mother then told him that the CEO family's youthful members are notorious for being a wild bunch that thrive in craziness and disorder, with Taegyeon being the exception. Lunacy is passed on from generation to generation. It is both a blessing and a curse. Even if Taegyeon could suppress his desires using the strength of the young bloodline, no one knows how long that would endure. Her mother was certain that there was a time when Taegyeon wanted to hold the girl captive, possibly tying her up a hundred times so she couldn't move an inch and then turning her into a doll that had eyes only for Taegyeon. She went on to say that clansmen are born with destructive instincts and cannot be removed from them. So she questioned Taegyeon if he had done anything similar to that woman. Taegyeon responded immediately to his mother, stating she was mistaken. He is a direct descendant and the CEO family's leader. He has no reason to go around planning such things, nor would it suit him. Her mother was overjoyed and told her son that she was considering acting as a matchmaker for him. Taegyeong inquired as to who she had in mind. Her mother then stated that only Qingqing of the Jin family was the ideal spouse for him. For the time being, I'll end this here. Did you enjoy the manhwa? If so, then check back for part 4. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for more.